So um, we have, uh, the four of us, have created uh, an instrument used to uh, see a different side of art at uh, this museum. So uh, a different perspective on, on the already existing artwork. And uh, instead of using all the artworks, we've decided to just take one piece and try to dive into it and see how much information we can get from that. So uh, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So um, <coughs> we use this iPad and you can see through it and it registers the, uh, the painting and then we can overlay graphics. Um, and we are working with these two different layers. One is where you can uh, see different sides of the image uh, with different layers, and the other one is a contextual uh, view. With this contextual one, you see from the side or from the, when you're far away. So when you're far away from the painting, you see the context. And when you go close, then you see the detail of the image. And the idea is that this interface is supposed to be non-intrusive, so you can just put it down if you don't want all that interface stuff and just look at the art. And you don't know, you don't need any extra tags or anything in the building. Uh, it just works as an application. <coughs> um, so you can try this. So artwork is often. Um Imaged using different wavelengths of light in museums to give more information about the painting. This is always hidden to the viewer. There's many layers which are invisible to the human eye, such as an IR layer. And in infrared, you can see pencil sketches which are actually hidden by the paint. And we wanted to overlay this so we can basically swipe in between the original painting and the IR layer just by pinching as we see up there. Another layer that we have available is the UV layer. And this is just another wavelength of light, and this actually brings out um, changes in the surface morphology. So we can see if it's been retouched or, um, or, or fixed in some way. And actually, interestingly, in this painting, if you look carefully, just where the, the finger is hovering, there's a big white scratch, which is not really visible in the visible, in the visible spectrum, but it really comes out in the UV. then this painting is actually even imaged using x-rays. Um, here, the, the interface is the same, but from, in the x-rays we actually see, we see through the painting and the canvas and the support behind. We can also see uh, heading pigments in the paint coming out, but you can kind of make out some white areas in between the wooden structure. So uh, this contextual layer has a different kind of view on the uh, what other artworks are related to the one you're looking at. Um, in the physical space, of course, you have all the paintings around you that the museum has decided that somehow fits together with this artwork. Um, but we have a statistical approach where we take as many parameters as we can find in the database and then do a cluster analysis and then find the ones that are closest statistically. Um, and then you can kind of see what kind of family of artworks it belongs to your new statistics. So um, you can talk more about this. So to do that, uh, we have taken the 65k artworks available in the SMK database, and we started clustering them, hunting for coloration and similarities. And we we end up <coughs> having a gigantic database of information about all the artworks. We focus mostly on the period, on the region on the technique and on the media used to create the artwork. And the result is that whenever we have an artwork that we want to um, index, we can just plug it in in our application and we find out where it belongs. And when we know where it belongs, we can actually suggest you uh, what to watch next based on how it correlates with the database we have built. And this is some kind of information that goes in the direction of making you explore the museum in the way you want to depending on if you like the picture you are seeing or not. But we have done more, and Henry will talk about it. So, seeing that we've already shown you how the image looks in UV, invisible, and in infrared, we wanted to kind of co collect this information into, uh, into one, one space. And the scientific way to do this is to kind of 
combine them in a spectrogram, which is what you see at the top. So this color bar is roughly the visible region, and the bumps you see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the spectral fingerprints in the UV and the IR. And then we wanted to use this as a, um, as a tool to further um, compare different paintings. So not just doing this finding a spectrogram, we also wanted to compare the color palettes of different paintings. So this uh, bar chart you see just there, that's kind of the, the, the height of the bar that represents the dominance of a color in our chosen painting. Using both the spectroscopic uh, fingerprint and this color map, we wanted to kind of look at the whole database and see if we could find uh, images of similar colors and also had this uh, similar in terms of the spectrogram. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do this on the whole database due to uh, just processing time, but here on the, um, on the right side of the screen, you can see a, just a, a representative um, histogram of colors which dominate the color palette here at SMK. You can see a dominance of uh, beige and, and brown and gray, and then some highlight colors coming out. I think that's us.